I guess we'll try this angle because at least in the little viewfinder, I look like not a potato, so. Hey everybody, I'm Yubi from Yubi the Book Demon and we are in a very different location as you can see. It's my computer setup. Um, I did at one point do a tour of my new setup and that went away and, and I, I've already recorded this particular year wrap up in reading um, like twice already and every time I do it, it I look terrible and I sound terrible so this is gonna be the last time and hopefully I've, I've fixed some problems it's a new recording space we're figuring it out today we are going to go through my Goodreads it's the end of the year and we're vastly approaching the goal the goal point at which I completely failed so um, that's all right we don't care too much because this year was trash the other thing that is also trash which I'm really not happy about is the fact that my Goodreads goals says that I've only read 10 out of 60 Five books and that is simply not true like I, I'm looking at all of the things that it, it counts and I'm like this book is missing and this book is missing for some reason it's not pulling certain ones that I finished over and I don't know why but regardless here we are we'll go through what it counts first and then we'll do a quick uh, overview star rating and uh, what I suggest if I if I recommend it or not first we have to kill a kingdom which I did do for the book club I rated it three stars <sighs> And I have I have lots of issues with this book some world-building issues in particular but also kind of like mm, weird racial things racist things uh, not really a fan I feel like there's a reason why nobody really talks about this one and if they did then it was not a gr like the, from what I've seen it was like it's okay it's just kind of okay it tried to do vicious mermaids which I'm I'm 100% down for that's kind of why I wanted to read it in the first place but for some reason something didn't quite land and I don't know what it is this is technically a little mermaid retelling which also I'm that kind of got me as well I'm really not a fan of little mermaid retellings I'm not a fan of retellings to begin with so I'm a little biased in that respect but as far as like the technicality of the writing and everything goes, I still had to give it kind of a three. The love interest that we're supposed to be, you know, following, it never really felt like they were in love. It was felt like they were being forced in love or having any sort of feelings for one another. So I didn't have many, like really strong feelings about it anyway. Do I recommend this? No, I, I would not really recommend this. If you like these sorts of things, if you don't mind, if you just kind of want something that will fill a slot, I think maybe this is a good fit for you, but I wouldn't recommend it other than that. Next is Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee, and I, I was so looking forward to this book, and I had to give it a three star rating. There is something about this book that I, I don't really know how, like, how to describe it or what name to give it necessarily. So I'm calling it the Forest of Souls problem for no other reason than it's really poignant in this book, but I've run across this problem as well. And I want to say it ties into an unreliable narrator. I am constantly questioning whether or not the information that I'm being given is true. Now, unlike other unreliable narrators where some of it's true, some of it isn't, everything that I'm given is true. So I don't know what it is about the the narration style or whatever that I'm I'm constantly questioning whether or not I need I can trust what I'm being given. And I I think it has to do with the fact that I'm getting it from only one source rather than multiple sources. And the the cleverness of the protagonist ends up to me coming off as kind of a weakness of the story because I, I don't trust it. I don't know why that is. Did I really enjoy this world? Absolutely. Did I enjoy the all the characters? Yes. Did I enjoy the relationships? Yes. I, I enjoyed everything about this book except for that nagging feeling that we weren't right. That, th that what I was hearing and the thought process of the protagonist wasn't right. I've come across this before. I, I don't I don't know what it is. I really don't know. So from a technical standpoint, I'm very confused, but I give it three stars because I had that feeling and it really dampened the experience for me. However, I haven't heard this problem with most of other people who have read this. So I don't know if it's a me thing. It might be a me thing. Either way, do I recommend this? Absolutely. This was a fantastic read. Like I said, I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know if I will be going uh, to the next one, which is this one. I don't remember what it is. I'm a terrible human being. I, it's three stars, but I recommend it. I think most people out there would actually really enjoy this. Um, and I like Lori and Lee's other stuff, 
Uh, it's just for whatever reason, this particular one didn't land. And I'm real upset about that. Next, I read The Hand on the Wall by Maureen Johnson. This is the third in the Truly Devious series, and I gave it four stars. It was a great ending. It was a great third book. It was a great way to cap off this mystery. Absolutely, I recommend the entire trilogy, but particularly, you know, keep going. I know that the ending of the first one confused some people. The middle one, it has a little bit of a sagging middle, but it's a really strong end. I, I really recommend that you do all three. Honestly, this kind of reignited my love of mysteries. I grew up with all the Agatha Christie, like Poirot and, you know, Murder, She Wrote and the whole thing. And I, I really, really miss that kind of sense of putting things together and whatnot. And it, it's something that I haven't really found a, a want to read, but for whatever reason, the Truly Dubious series really, really landed for me and I, I think it's great. Next on here we have Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir and I mean yes absolutely four stars great book people have talked about this you know in other videos and we'll probably do a lot better than I did. For me what's there not to love we have sci-fi fantasy we have necromancers we have we have sapphic romance we have technically we have a hate to love in there too and like just a very very colorful cast of characters. Mystery puzzle solving, like we, we, you know, go down the line of things that I like. This book had it and it was a little confusing at first. I'm not gonna lie. I honestly think that a lot of sci-fi has this problem because it's so far reaching. If you're down to like, let it be what it's going to be, getting the ninth was great. I cannot wait till we get, I get to Harrow. I will probably be waiting till Nona the ninth comes out before I read Harrow because I have terrible book hangovers and it takes me forever to get through book series because I don't want those book hangovers. So if I pace it out in my head, it lengthens out the time that I've read that. It's not really that way, but it's how I trick my brain into not crying at the end when I've left this world. The next few, we did some research for um, things, for, for projects in the future. First one is the Book of Yokai, Mysterious Creatures and such and so forth. I gave it four stars and this, like I said, this is more of a research book. This is not really a uh, sit down and read it because it's gonna be a great story. This is just a, com a compilation of yokai, of Japanese sort of like spirit demon things. Yes. Unfortunately, in, in my experience of trying to get books on the subjects that I want, I don't really find them to be written by Japanese people. <laughs> the ones that are written in English are, or translated into English, are by white people coming in and trying to understand what these things are. A lot of times that comes with um, language that I am really not happy with. This is one of those books where there's a very kind of exoticized, mysterious tone about it and I don't like it. This is an older book. This is this has not been written, you know, in the last even 10 years, I think. It suffers from its time. That's not to say that I enjoyed it, but unfortunately, like the 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 solid information is good. So if you are interested in yokai at all, this might be a, a good book to to check out and like learn about the different types of mythological creatures that you can find in your kind of everyday life. Yokai are not necessarily, you know, big hulking demons. Like, look, there's an umbrella yokai. There is a slipper, like a sandal yokai. And I find them to be amazing because they can just be in your house. It's great. Next one is Urashima Taro and other Japanese children's fairy tales. Five stars, this is a children's book. I grew, I actually grew up with this book. I don't think that I grew up with the compilation. I think each one of these was a different fairy tale that was like at my church in like little tiny books for us to check out. This was really nostalgic for me. Um, also, this was technically research because I hadn't read Urashima Taro in a number of years, but now I know I have a copy. It is an e-copy and the beautiful colors is not are not uh, present in that e-copy, but just the art style, it just, you know, was warm and fuzzy. That was a thing. Uh, do I recommend this? Absolutely. I think that they're fun. The uh, fairy tales that aren't necessarily like the Western fairy tales that we like to uh, can, like perpetuate now, um, they, they feel much older or like the older ones that don't necessarily have a happy ending. I also think that if you're trying to expose your kids to other forms of culture and fairy tales and like lore and whatnot, this is a really good compilation and it's it's cute and it's cheap and there's the stories are very very short. Next is First Become Ashes by K.M. Spara. This was probably my most anticipated read of the year and 
I had to give it four stars. I did, couldn't give it a full five. It was it was so interesting. So I, I loved his debut, which was Dossel. I had certain expectations of what this writing was gonna be. And it was and it wasn't. It was absolutely his writing. And the if you wanna talk about tr the trauma of this, the, the trauma was very similar. We, we had very, very similar notes of what these characters were going through. And I, I knew straight up that there was a cult in here. So I knew that we were gonna be dealing with culty stuff. However, there was also cosplaying? Like legitimately there was like a comic con convention happening and really extremely nerdy stuff that I was all about. But at the same time, I'm like, this is such like a juxtaposition to everything that I was expecting that I don't know how to handle this. And it took me a while to like, let it be what it was going to be. I fought with it just a little bit. Do I recommend this? Yes, if you can handle all of the trigger warnings because there are a ton of them. Honestly, I might do a separate like review of this book, even though it's been several months because like, I really enjoyed it. I did. And I think that if this, this continues to be a trend, his stuff is very good, but you really kind of need the primer of these are the, the triggers that you are going to see. And sometimes it's really, really hard. I think that if you want to get into his things that first become ashes might be a more palatable experience than docile, but we did not get that in that order. So I didn't get that in that order. Warnings for, well, any, any sort of cult activity, sexual abuse, child abuse, physical and mental abuse, um, drug abuse. I would, I would say police brutality for this one. I, I don't, I want to say brainwashing. God, I don't, I don't, I, those are the ones that I can think of off the top of my head. I want to say perhaps that there is a suicide attempt. I think there may be, ID it's suicidal ideation. Um, Self-harm is absolutely, absolutely a thing in this. It comes, it comes with a lot of really heavy topics. I can't remember who did the little blurb, but it is, he deals with these traumas unflinchingly and absolutely, we, there's, there are no punches pulled, but he manages to navigate them quite well. I really enjoyed it. I recommend if you can handle the topics, good luck, have fun. <laughs> Next one is probably my favorite read of the year and it's a novella and that was Zowry of Blood by S.T. Gibson and five stars. Uh, I devoured this so quick. I, all, I did this on uh, audiobook and I do believe that I have the physical one coming. You know me, I don't have, I don't really have a lot of room for physical books. So the fact that I liked this so much that I'm buying a physical copy tells you that I love this book so much. This is a Dracula retelling from the perspective of one of his brides. Kind of going from there. It is a farewell letter, technically, um, which also is really not my thing. The reason why I didn't really like Dracula, like the, the original, was because it's diaries and letters and recountings, like newspaper clippings. I don't like that style. And yet this one works so well as a letter. I 100% I approve of it. This has to deal with abuse within a relationship. It's Dracula, so there's blood and gore, violence, but it, it does have to do with the traumatic abuse within a, within a romantic relationship and overcoming that really. It is, a, it is a very lovely ending. I don't know if it is a happy ending, but it's, real, it's really quite good. Absolutely 100% recommend this. I'm so excited. This was wonderful. I really want to know what she's going to come up with next. I know that she's very much into dark academia, so her next book has something to do with a dark academic setting, but I don't know what it's about. I'm still very excited. If this was her debut, I want to see what she comes up with next. Next, I have uh, Vengeful by V.E. Schwab. I finally got around to this, and I've I fully understand why people now, why people were like, Vicious was excellent, Vengeful was disappointing. <sighs> I, I have, I'm having this problem with this particular, it's the villains universe, in that Vicious was so good. I, I love being in this universe. I, I love how the concepts work. I love how we're playing with death, essentially. But in Vengeful, nothing happens. And I hate, I hate that I'm saying this. Nothing happens for so long. You have to take this leap of faith that there is, there's going to be this beautiful gem at the end. And oh my God, there is. There is, there is, there is. There is a moment, literally two sentences, that just encapsulate my love of this book 
so well, but you have to get through almost 400 pages to get there. And that's really difficult. Even for someone who really loves this book, I, for a long time, I'm like, I'm getting all this information. What are we doing with it? Where, where are we going? I'm anticipating the climax, but I don't know what to do with all of this right now. I won't say that it sucked because it didn't. It was just frustrating. It was a very frustrating book. And considering we were sort of exploring the world and what had happened and all of the buildup in Vicious, it didn't quite land the same way when we were doing that for Vengeful. Because let's be honest, we were there for Victor and Eli. I don't think that any of us cared about anybody else. And unfortunately, that's kind of what this book was about, was everybody else. I'm still going to try to dig through more of the villains universe. I know that there's another one coming out. I don't know when. And I'm going to read it eventually, um, but I don't really know what necessarily I'm going to feel about it. Oh, Oh, I just, I have such mixed feelings about it. Next on the list, I read Velvet Was the Night by Silvia Moreno Garcia, and I, oh God, I really like her. I really like her. I love all the stuff that she does. I don't think that I've read something yet by her that I have not liked. Velvet Was the Night was a Pulp Fiction noir, and uh, I've, I gave it four stars, reluctant four stars, but I, I feel like I needed to. There were moments where I didn't really like the characters and it wasn't even like I love to hate you it was like I don't want to read about you anymore um and unfortunately that was also one of the narrators so that kind of sucked at the same time like it it was really good the things that happened in the story are fictionalized but there are things that happened in Mexico during uh, I think she said the 60s 70s so there is historical context and that's the thing is like I I feel like I want to dive into more of this history now it brings up something that I was not aware of before for, and so now I want to understand more of the history of it. It's interesting. I really enjoyed it. I, I would absolutely recommend this. Um, there is a lot of violence. There are a lot of feminist issues that come up, particularly, you know, in the workplace and within culture and whatnot. And there is, I believe, an attempt at sexual violence. I, I don't believe that it ever goes through and certainly not on page. It's, it's interesting. It's very interesting. It's not as hard hitting of a noir that I thought it was going to be. It, it was more on the pulp end of Pulp Fiction, but it was it was good. It was wonderful. I enjoyed most of it. And getting toward the end, when we were getting toward, you know, the climax and the twists and everything, I was anticipating it and I did not want to put the book down. If anything that I said interest, interested you at all, I think this this would be a good book for you. So uh, that was the end of my Goodreads challenge set I wrote. Let's go into the rest that uh, I have read and it just didn't transfer over for some reason. The Warm Up by V. By v. E. Schwab, which is also one of the villain's uh, stories. What it says on Goodreads is about 15 pages. It's a, it's a very short story. And I rated it three stars. I don't think that, I don't know if I would recommend it. It's just one of those like, did this need to exist? I don't know. I kind of enjoyed it because I enjoyed the universe, but if you're already not a fan of Vicious and you want more little pieces of lore, I guess I don't think that I would I would recommend this to you. It 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 doesn't it wouldn't make sense first off, and second I don't think the vast majority of people would enjoy it. Uh, next was the House with Chicken Legs by Sophie Anderson, and this what I read for the Wild Sasha Slavicathon. It was like a two day event, and it's going to be happening again in the future. So subscribe to her channel, see what's going to happen with that. I had a really fun time. This, the House with Chicken Legs is a Baba Yaga story and it is, um, I believe it's middle grade, it might be children's, but like, it was so good. We have kind of a, a cartoonish multicultural facet to it. That's totally fine. There's there's no nuance there. The nuance actually comes with dealing with grief and death and loss, loss of, loss of family, loss of friends, um, finding your place in the world. And it, it does it with a very, um, firm but gentle hand. So I think that this is a really good story, kind of no matter what age you are. There is that childlike wonder and, you know, enthusiasm for life. And it it really it really warmed my heart going through this, but also the the things that we needed to talk about in this book were handled very well. And it follows that trajectory of, I don't want to accept this, I don't want to accept this, I'm going to go through all the stages of grief because it's natural and I come out on the other side be being better. I gave it five stars because um, I, I couldn't not give it five stars. There are pacing things that I'm not really happy with. I almost couldn't fault it for that. 
which is kind of odd for me. I have a big thing with pacing. This was fabulous. I loved it. Um, absolutely would recommend, no matter no matter what age you are. Next is of Blood and Bones, working with Shadow Magic and the Dark Moon. This I did not give any stars to because I don't think I'm qualified really for this. This is a book on magic. I there's 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 no way to put that other than other than witchcraft. I I feel like a lot of the things that I've already read generally in the wider spectrum has been very, you know, this is how you explore, this is how you want to heal, this is what you want to do when you, you know you're putting good things into the world. And this is kind of like that except in a darker like standpoint. Sometimes you need to cut off the toxic people in your life in order for you to heal yourself. So how do you do that? Because that is technically harming a relationship that you don't want anymore. It's not black magic, it's not bad magic, it's working responsibly with something that isn't all love and light and fluffiness. And I really appreciate that because this ex this does exist and to ignore the darker side of anything is kind of dishonest, I think, in a lot of ways. I read this, I didn't give it any stars, again, I don't feel qualified. Uh, I'm sure that there are people who are much more qualified in the spiritual witch community that would be able to tell you all about this. Go look it up if you're interested. Next is Iron Widow. Absolutely recommend it. Oh my god, this was so much fun. I knew that it there was going to be mechs in it. I knew that we were going to be looking at Wu Zetian, and I knew that we were going to have a lot of feminism, and I was like, you know what, I really kind of wonder when we're going to see this on page. Hit play for the audiobook, and was hit immediately by all of it. So it's real good. It's also real angry. And I was really kind of afraid that it was going to stay kind of this one note angry feminism the entire time, but it does take on nuance. The main character, Zetian, does grow and it's it's poly, it's polyamorous. We we enjoy this very much. It's a fabulous time. Okay, I also can went into this going into it thinking that this was going to be a standalone. And then we got to the end and I'm like, oh, this is great. Oh, there's a little bit of an epilogue. Let's go to the epilogue. And that ending, I was so angry. I, I literally was screaming because I'm like, you can't, you can't do this to me. You can't end it like that. You, you can't. It was so good. 100% um, recommend. You need to experience this book like today like yesterday. It, it's that good. Please, please, please read this book. Next was The Daughters of Nri, and I did not give this a star rating either. And this was mostly because I felt unqualified to, to give this uh, a star rating. It doesn't so much happen at the end, but like on the first, maybe third of the book feels weird to me. And the reason it feels weird is what I suspect is that it is not Western storytelling. It's not something that I have studied. Like my gut reaction is to say that this pattern is more African or West African storytelling. I don't know for sure, but I've heard other stories told in more like a folk setting where the story kind of meanders a little bit. It's not like way outside. We don't ever get information that like has nothing to do with anything, but there are details that don't seem relevant at first and sometimes never come back into the story. It just enriches the world and it's, it's in here. So I want to say that this is true. I don't 100% know if that is true, but I also felt really unqualified to give it a star rating because I don't really know what to say. I think if I did give it a star rating, I'd probably give it a four. That's because I really enjoyed what was happening. I enjoyed the characters and the relationships. Like there is actually, there's a one character, they're not one of the, the main characters. I absolutely hate it in the first quarter of the book. She attempts to murder somebody. And by the, like the middle of the book, I actually really liked her. And it really wasn't because of the trauma that had happened, it was that she grew as a character. She started becoming an ally. I didn't think that I would like her at all, like at all at all. And yet here we are. <laughs> there, There is something else that I was, again, I sort of went into this thinking that this was going to be a standalone. Um, it is a series and when I finished the book, I was kind of dissatisfied before I found out that it was a series. Because it's not a standalone, I don't have that feeling anymore, but that was my initial reaction going into it. I am gonna continue with the series. I would really like to. Um, I'd also like to look at more like structure of 
African storytelling. So uh, if you have any recommendations, if, even if it's like literal textbook, I would love to know, leave it in the comments below. And next is Holly Black's How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories. I gave this five stars and that really shocks me. You cannot read this by itself. You would have to read the Cruel Prince trilogy before you read this. And if you know anything about me and the Cruel Prince trilogy, I had a really difficult time with it. it sort of was okay with the first one. I liked the second one only because Jude got tortured for like a good quarter of the book. Little physical torture. I enjoyed that because I hate her so much. And The Queen of Nothing was a pretty good re like capstone to uh, end that trilogy. But this book made me like Cardin better? It made me like Jude better? Do I like the Cruel Prince trilogy? I don't know. But this made me question that. Um, and I, I do think that it was structured very well. I think that we had a good pacing and a good reference to what was happening from Cardin's point of view. And like, it's it's not that long. It says it's 200 pages on here. It was it was fun. I think that you should read it if you read the Cruel Prince trilogy and sort even sort of liked it. Like I said, I, I like these characters better now that I've read this. I don't know why, but there we are. I love Holly Black's writing. I love the fairy world that she's created. It feels really good to me. So next we have Weave the Liminal <laughs> Weave the Liminal Living Modern Traditional Witchcraft. Did not rate this one either. Again, this is research on witchy stuff. You'll you can probably go find other people who are more qualified to talk about this subject than I am, but this was fun. Um, it was a good like base introduction and it gave actually a little bit of history about how she started out, which was like maybe 30, 40 years ago, and how the view of witchcraft and paganism has changed over the decades. So I, I thought that was this was really good. It said that it was first published 2019, so only a couple years ago. So yeah, this is this is quite interesting and fun. Last I I read Extraordinary. This is a compilation of five comics. Mm, I don't know. I, I really don't know. I gave it four stars and this is a, that's a very biased four stars. I'm not gonna lie. I enjoyed it, but ultimately this felt like ultimately this felt like this felt like vicious and vengeful again and kind of not in the way that I wanted it to. like literally down to the um, the found family structure. Mm, no, I maybe I should have I, I should go back. Maybe this is a three star. And again, that's an, that's a biased three star because like, did I enjoy this? Yes. Do I think that this is actually a pretty good introduction into the villains universe? Yes. We even get a little bit of uh, Eli and Victor's story. I don't think this needed to exist. And I'm really sad to say that because everything that you get in here is also in Vicious and Vengeful. I'm really sad about this. I It breaks my heart. It's it's real hard to say this, but he, this, is, this is how it is. I was really excited for this and I'm not necessarily let down, but I was hoping for more. So that's kind of where I'm at. Anyway, um, I think that's all. Oh, that was a lot and this is, I've been talking for an hour. So hopefully this will not take an hour to actually cut down and speed up and everything. So uh, thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below if you have not already for content that would be better than this. I don't know how frequently I will be doing more, uh, you know, reading updates because I don't know how much I'm gonna be able to read. I keep on setting goals and they suck. I hope you've had a fabulous winter tide holiday season wherever you are and I hope you continue to if you are celebrating things still um, and hopefully I'll have this up by New Year so I hope you all have a wonderful New Year and I'll see you when I see you all right bye she said it will never go away I know there is nothing left to say can we Try to hold on just for now Even if we don't know how To show them what we're all about oh, oh, oh.